10 years ago, while working on a documentary about Wilt Chamberlain, I decided to fly to Los Angeles, California to interview Philadelphia's own Jerome Poo Richardson. When I get there, there is no Poo Richardson to be found. I'm calling him day one, day two, day three, texting day four, day five. No Poo Richardson to be found. I have about four or five hours left before my flight leaves back to Philadelphia. And about two hours before it was time for me to leave, I get a call. Pooh Richardson. All right, here we go. So, um, where'd you grow up playing basketball? High school, where'd you grow up playing basketball? I grew up uh, playing basketball in, in Philadelphia, quite naturally, in uh, South Philadelphia. That's where I'm originally from. Okay, so which which neighborhood was there a certain rec center um, or playground? It, it was it was actually in uh, the project in South Philly. Um, okay. Past Young Projects uh, is when I when I first learned how to play uh, basketball. You know, in football because football was basically my number one sport. So how did you end up um, becoming a student at Benjamin Franklin High? <laughs> Long story. Um, as as a kid, I watched uh, a lot of. Basketball, basketball is my life. You know, I just watched basketball, stayed on top of the game. And one day I was watching um, a high school game. It was Overbrook uh, playing against uh, Ben Franklin. And uh, I, I uh, what dates? Uh, must have been, have to be, mm, was it early 80 or maybe late 70s or something? I, I, um, I saw Brook and, and Brook defeated Franklin at the time. And, um, a uh, kid by the name of uh, Reggie Faison was playing, who happened to live about four doors down from my, my grandmother. And uh, I've known him before he went to high school, and we used to play, me and him, one-on-one -on, -one on a little, little milk crates outside uh, on Fontaine Street, So, uh, which was only a stone throw away from uh, uh, the park, the reservoir in the park out there in Diamond Street. So. Um, we played and, and, and uh, used to challenge each other, and he, he used to do some phenomenal things. And, and, and then when I had the opportunity to see him play on TV and saw Franklin uh, play Brook, you know, I, I've always wanted to go to Franklin ever since then. Awesome. Awesome. Um, there's been some things uh, spoken of you in terms of being a prototypical Philadelphia guard, uh, guard uh, sense of cockiness, aggressiveness, confidence. Speak to how you obtain um, the character. Talk to me about Philadelphia's South Garden. Well, I guess they label uh, Philadelphia having a certain style of guard. It's just our, it's just the makeup that we have. I think what, what it is, it's uh, you're always challenged. Uh, no one ever believes that you're good. So you, you're constantly proving yourself and I think you take on those characteristics as you go on in life. And one thing about when you, when you play uh, in Philly, a guy who can play, he always can play. He can be an older guy, he can be on the street corner, he can be a guy who haven't been in a gym for 15 years. But he gets to talking crazy about playing against you and this and that. And you better be careful because he's, he's probably good. You know, I've learned that a couple times, you know, um, where I'm hearing a guy talking about how he can shoot and he can do this, he can do this. Older man out of North Philly, so I didn't believe him. Took him out there on the court. Uh, we were um, at Francisville, I think. And I think this old guy, I don't even know his name. I think this old guy may have made 25 shots, man, in a row. And he wasn't gonna play me for free. I, I think he was playing me for like three dollars, like a buck, a dollar, like a game. He beat me like every game. The, um, you have a unique nickname. How did you get the nickname of Pooh? Um, I was named that by my grandmother. Um, it's, it's really a long story. <laughs> it's uh, what I try to do. I try to keep it. 
I try to keep it clean and say poo because of the Winnie the Pooh. Right. But and and I was a heavy set kid early on when I was a little baby. But that's not what she named me. That uh, <laughs> it's a saying that we used to have in in, in Philly when you growing up. Uh, poo Tang. <laughs> that's what she. That's what she got that from. <laughs> that's the that's the truth right there. <laughs> so so what do you think about uh, you you know Jerome Allen? Yes. And he, he he nicknamed himself Pooh after you. What do you, what do you think about that? And the irony of him going on to become a professional because he, we played together when we were twelve. He and I, the national power team. He was Pooh when he was twelve. Right, right. Um, and I've known him since then. Also, uh, I like I like Jerome. I think he's uh, he's a great example of of, uh, of uh, Philadelphia. Great example of basketball. A guy who. Uh, Spent some time in NBA. Spent some time overseas where he, he he played predominantly his career. Come back home, become a coach at a great university, uh, academic university at that, and where where basketball is used as a tool to get a great education and have a great life. And he's a prime example of that. I, I couldn't be any any prouder of an individual whose uh, nickname is, is the same as mine for him to be the kind of person that he's turned out to be. So take me back to 1984-85, all public. Names like Lionel Simmons, Brian Shorter, Bo Kimball, Hank Gavins, Howie Evans, Doug Overton. Take me back to your high school experiences. What, what was that like? You played with several guys who went on to be pros. That's, that's not common anymore. Well, you know, no, not at all. But that's because we, we, we pushed each other so much. And, you know, it's a lot of guys who didn't go to that next level who had the potential and the talent to do, do so. Uh, one, of the, one of the things that I, I thought that was a little unique at that time in Philly is that all your best talent was in that one city. So we didn't have to go outside the city to play no one or, any, or, or play any games. And, and it would be just a phone call or two to get everybody in the gym and to play up and down a little bit on Saturday or you know, on a Thursday night or whatever, whenever we, you know, called each other. And, you know, I would call Hank sometimes and, and Hank would say, hey, we down at the King Center, we doing this, we doing that. And I was like, man, it's a ride for me to get down there. I got to get on the bus, I got to do this. If I come down there, man, y'all better be playing. <laughs> and he's like, oh, playing, it's going to be, we gonna, you're going to get bust too. We got such and such going to be here and this and that. And Mike Anderson going to be there and Heat going to be there. So we... It just, it was just so much, it was just, it was really so much of a competition against each other. And I think a large part of that was uh, the fact that the Sunny Hill League was so strong at the time. The Future League mm -hmm. and the High School League was, was so strong at the time. It was just, Philly was just reeking with talent at that time. Speaking of Sunny Hill, they say that Sunny Hill wanted you to go to Temple. And the U2 had some type of disagreement because you wanted to go to UCLA. Talk to me about that. Well, you know what? Honestly, probably deep down in his heart, he probably wanted me to go to Temple, but he never, he never demonstrated that out, and flat out said that. Uh, he he hinted around a couple of times, but I think because he he played such an important part in my life uh, as a youth, that if he would have told me to go to Temple and said it flat out, I probably would have went to Temple because that's how our relationship was when I was when I was young. Um, that's how it, that's how, you know, I responded uh, pretty much to him because uh, you know, on a lot of people it's, it's been a lot of people who's had their had their hands in me being successful and he's definitely one of the major people who've had their hands on and made to even get to that next level. What about Coach Ham? Talk to me about your relationship with Coach Ham. Wow. Um, my relation with Ham is, is, is phenomenal. Um, Ham was more like uh, what we call Heem, brother Heem. Heem was more. He was more like uh, uh, he was a coach. He demanded respect, but at the same time, you could talk to him about anything. He was like a brother. So he was. He was more or less like. He would be like a player's dream. If if, if I could carve out uh, a guy you would you would love to play for, it it would be him. 
because he just he, he lets you be yourself and he understands a lot of things that uh, the younger inner city uh, basketball players go through so he kind of re he relates extremely well so you you find yourself in UC at UCLA they say it's about seven to ten games before you became a starter as a freshman uh -huh. then um, you have competition in, in, in guys like uh, David Rivers. Mm -hmm. now, there was a tell me tell me about that experience. You're a freshman and you, you, now you're on the big scene at, at, at UCLA. Well, um, that was one of the best experiences of my life. The, the fact that it matter even going to UCLA. Um, I'm sure you know if I would have went to other schools, I probably could have been successful. But you know. At the time, UCLA was a great fit for me. Uh, David Rivers, as everyone knows in college, was a great talent. You know, um, Jersey City guy. He could play. You know, had handled the ball like like no other. But I've seen it before. You know, I grew up in Philadelphia, man, where where we had some guards. <laughs> so I've seen it before. You know, you you're not going to tell me that. As, as great as as great as of a college player David River was, and great as of a high school player David River was, you know I was I was more worried about you know when I was coming up dealing with a guy like Mike Anderson, you know who don't know anything else but driving to the basket and getting forty on you. So you know grow, growing up with that, and it, it's it's so unique because I, I'm, I'm gonna tell you I had a cousin uh, who lived on Mike Anderson's block. And me and Mike, when I come down on the weekend on Dover Street, I used to come in the weekend and I used to, and people didn't know, didn't know that, you know, I was, I was about 12, 13. And me and Mike used to go to the, the little school. And I'm, I'm, I'm not for, I think the school was Kelly. I'm not, I'm not for sure uh, the name of the school, but it was, I, I think Mike went to elementary school there. We used to go out and, and on the, uh, the, the schoolyard and me and him would play one-on-one -on -one for hours he was he was a little bit older than me but I was young I was young and so was he I was about maybe 12 13 he was about 14 maybe you know and we used to go at it so when I had to face Mike in high school I wasn't I already seen it before you, you know you know and, and then having relatives in North Philly and me being from South Philly it was a it was a whole different it was a whole different dynamic because the, the saying is, if you can survive North Philly, you can survive any place. You, um, you, you get to UCLA, uh, there's a history there with Philadelphia guards, Andre McCarter, Walt Hazard. Mm -hmm. uh, did you meet any of those guys while you were there at UCLA? Did they, how, how were you recruited to UCLA? Did they have anything to do with it? Well, uh, um, Coach Hazard was the head coach and Andre McCarter was the assistant. Uh, Andre came out. I've known the history of Andre McCart. I've seen him play a few times, but uh, in in uh, Baker League, and um, he's actually from South Philly. And they used to talk about when they were talking about South Philly, they always talk about South Philly, me, Andre, blah, you know, brought back and forth. And a lot of people didn't know I was actually from South Philadelphia because I went to school in North Philly and I played in the Sunny Hill League for West Philly. And then later on, as a as a as a young uh, teenager, we moved to the Logan area. So you pretty much Germantown area. So you know, you wasn't. I just say I was Philly. You know what I'm saying? Because I I played in in every spot, in in every area. I didn't stay in one area. So I'm just Philly. Give me a top Philadelphia, top five Philadelphia guards. Wow. Whoo. Um, in, in no particular order because it's hard for me to, to, to say in any, any particular order. Um, being from South Philly, you know, originally, uh, Nate Blackwell, I, w I would have to say Nate, Day Day. Um, then I'm going to break it down from areas, you know, then uh, playing a lot of my, my basketball in North Philly. Um, I want to say uh, Reggie Faison would be would be 
one strictly because he was like my hero, right? Yeah. Um, Reg and Mike Anderson. Um, quite naturally, I'm talking about guys that I, I played against or seen play like over and over again. Uh, West Philly, I, uh, I loved, uh, quite naturally, I loved uh, Ron Johnson, um, who I thought was, was, was real good. And I, I uh, love Howard Evans, who I had the opportunity to play with and, 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 and against. And one of my favorites, quite naturally, was Bruiser Flint, because he actually was the one who brought me to the Sunny Hill whole experience. You know, and taught me how to play, and taught me the mentor, the uh, the uh, the mentality of being a point guard. And now I learned that from him. And I've learned a lot of stuff from Sonny, as far as my skill and, and, and understanding the game. But but Bruiser was kind of like the guy who hand fed me and walked me through every stage of basketball that I had to learn as a guard. Um, Magic Johnson. Yes. So it became a, people say you, you and him, you and Matt became pretty good buddies. That's a pretty good point guard to be buddies. With. Talk <laughs> yeah. to me about Magic that's Johnson a, and Poole Richardson. That, that, that's, a, that's a little different. What, what happened was that my relationship uh, and uh, pretty much mentor towards me uh, having Magic Johnson around me when I was in college. Uh, great experience. He was at the pretty much the height of his game. Uh, always had time to spend with me, just, just talking to me about the little nuances of the game and, and we would just talk basketball. And then when, one day he said, I, I want you to meet a, a real good friend of mine, man, um, because I, I think you'll be able to relate to him, you know, about basketball and stuff like that. And that's when he introduced me to Isaiah Thomas. Wow. You know, and uh, you know, getting all this as a as a as a freshman in college, uh, you know, can be overwhelming. But they were just so much like older brothers, and going to the gym and, and working out in the summer uh, at UCLA because that's where most of the players would come in the summer to work out, play pickup ball at UCLA. And I had, I had the opportunity to play against that kind of competition every day and talk to those guys and get to know how you're supposed to play, what is expected of you. Uh, now, everyone has their own abilities. Everyone has um, their great qualities. You're talking about two Hall of Fame guys. Quite naturally, I, w I wasn't as talented as they were. you know. But to get something from them and to learn something from them, uh, and the fact that they was willing to teach me the stuff, you know, but I had a great foundation anyway because, you know, I had Bruiser Flint, Sonny Hills, and I played against all the guys that I've went through high school with, Bo Hank, uh, you know, I, 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 I've seen it all by that time. And, you know, just getting polished was pretty much what UCLA have done for me is uh, with Coach Hazard and, and, and Andre was just polishing me a little bit. The, um... Have you ever had an opportunity to meet Will Chamberlain? Yes. Yes. Talk to me about Will Chamberlain. Yes. Uh... <laughs> Hold on one second. 